Hey guys, we're talking Gateway and Portland in this video. Now, first and foremost, I'm going to be out of town this weekend, actually, just tomorrow till uh, Monday. So I'm not going to be live. I'm not sure if she's going to go live, but there'll be no live shows this weekend. This will pretty much be the only video um, that I make on this. The projections for trucks and cup will be updated the night before the race, like usual, but I will not be providing any Xfinity Series projections because I will be at uh, DreamHack Dallas pretty much the entirety of the weekend. And since they qualify, you know, right around 11 noon uh, in Portland or for Portland on Saturday, and then they race at like 4 o'clock, I'm not able to make projections for that. So first and foremost, that's there. This is primarily going to be focused on the Cup Series at Gateway. We'll talk about um, and trucks and, and Portland and stuff. But I, what I really want to focus primarily on is the Cup Series stuff here. And so when... When we're looking at that stuff, first and foremost, what we want to establish is just where kind of everybody's at on the short tracks. And mainly what I'm looking at here is just average finish. But when you look at the tracks that we're looking at, Martinsville, Richmond, uh, I'm just throwing in Bristol for this sake because that's what Racing Reference has uh, when we sort tracks less than one point, less than a mile. But even when you look at the like schedule, when you look at the tracks that I would actually lean towards, you can throw Phoenix in there as well if you're going back far enough. Um... But when you look at like the calendar, like Phoenix is certainly there, Richmond is certainly there. Um, I do not believe we have Phoenix in here as well. But uh, like that's what I would be looking at primarily, like where everybody's at on these flat tracks and the tracks that are able to, or the teams that are able to um, get the cars to rotate on much faster corners uh, that are also flat. Um, and so just like for the sake of this, like when you look at where the people are at. Um, like you're going to see that we're losing quite a lot of the Hendrick guys outside of Larson. Cause I mean, come on, it, it, it's WP Larson. Like he's going to be there, but we primarily see, you know, I, I mean, here, we'll, we'll look at it like top fives as well. But when you look at this, like we're primarily seeing that, like, this is where the Fords are certainly more comfortable at, uh, as of late when we're looking at like Blaney and Logano, for example, I mean, these guys have been pretty abysmal during the last month and a half. Cause it's just been 1.5s now that we're back to, um, Short tracks and stuff, I do expect Penske to run better than what they have been doing at the 1.5s. And so when we're looking at, do we even have, let's see if I got salaries yet. Uh, we do not have DraftKings salaries. That's why I did not uh, pull anything earlier. I was like, why do I not have the salaries yet? Because they just haven't released them yet. Because um, I'm recording this in Wednesday morning and stuff. And so when I look at this race here, RFK, the Penske guy, I mean, Cindric ain't a Penske boy. Like, come on, dude, Cindric blows. But like when we look at... Blaney and Logano, uh, Brad, uh, Chris Buescher, combined with the usual suspects of the Joe Gibbs guys, like those would probably be my primary, um, not even ex not even targets, but guys that I would envision who are going to compete for the win, compete for the top five and stuff like that when we're looking at these two races. When we look at the last two races here, now we've only had two races here the first year was part of the first year of the next gen car and so like i mean take that wonky you know with a grain of salt and stuff but the main thing to note is pay road plays a pretty good role in where people are finishing you know specifically when we look at what uh some of the place differential that is coming through late in these races i mean it's not only the fact that we're running you know we're having short runs to the end but the fact that getting off sequence and using pit road to prioritize passing is the most important part of this track okay um it is difficult to pass here typically it's going to be a boring race like people are going to run where they should uh if they have a fast car and they qualify well they're going to have a pretty significant advantage of maintaining their running position up top in this race but with all the yellows that we have seen over the last two years like this is the first year this is last year and you see the amount of low uh laps that these green flag runs are running you know, and we typically have, you know, like, you know, the big runs, but we're seeing the second half of the race here be very much a, um, what is it? Uh, very much a short run race and pit road and, and basically what tire, you know, the, what you're doing with your tires. If you're on two tires, if you're taking four, if you're staying out on old tires like that, that's where gateway comes into play in DFS. And so like, well, how do we know who's going to do what in that? Like you don't, you, you don't know where things are going to be. Um, or you don't know where people are going to pit and where they're not going to pit and stuff like that. When you look at the amount of leaders that we have and the amount of laps that they're leading, like the leader is pretty much stagnant. Cause they're like trying to maintain the control of the race until they like 
lose the lead because, you know, yet again, they, you know, get past them pit lane. Somebody else is on a different strategy, and then they're, like, blocked out of retaking the lead in this event, uh, unless you're just running up front and stuff. Um, and so when I'm looking at Gateway, this is very much a race to where I pretty much primarily want to build with, like, one to two lap leaders, like when I'm looking at my lineups, and it's most likely going to be people starting up front. When we look at just where the laps led have come from this field, and we look at the starting grid, you're going to notice that, yeah, I mean, clearly, I mean, Kyle Bush came from 12th in this race. True, I mean, this is Joe Gibbs racing, like, come on, starting 12th and 13th, like, those are guys that we would envision being up there. The McDowell lead in the first year was certainly surprising, but I mean, even Briscoe led here. Um, and then he just ran poorly, he ran to issues, um, in this race. But like, if you're starting up front, you, you have such a, such a chance to not only keep the lead, but retake it on pit lane. If everything's equal, all things are equal on pit lane. Number one pit stall is still going to keep you up there. Okay. You only get past people start taking two tires when you pit and other people stay out when you stay out and other people pit, like that's how you're going to lose it on pit lane. But if everybody's pitting, at least at the start of the race, we should see the guys up front have a good chance of leading in this race and staying up there and maintaining the running position position up there. Past that, oh my God, it, it, it's Truex again. Wow. Like Truex is good on these tracks. Holy, holy bejesus. Like I couldn't believe that. Um, but past that, where I stand is, and lastly, uh, less the main thing of like, um, or not the main thing. Let me let me go ahead and bring this up. And we look at where people are at. Now, yes, the first year we didn't have as wild wrecks in this race. I mean, this is when 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 Hamlin just went ape shit and like tried to take out Chastain and stuff. And this year or last year, um, when Raddick and those fellas got in a wreck. But uh, I'm not prior. I'm not expecting a lot of DNFs in this race, just straight up. And so, like, if your value is starting in the back of the field, I'm very concerned about it. Um, especially if they are just slow, like cars, like, you know, I'm not saying that Casgrala and Justin Haley haven't had speed, but you know, when we're looking at, when you're looking at the practice times and you're seeing where people are starting, if they're slow cars, like, and they're starting like 34th, I mean, you can't really envision them to get to like 28th or 26th. Like you're going to envision them to finish closer to, um, the thirties and stuff. Uh, even when they're slow, I mean, you can see that a lot of the values are very much struggling in this race and where do they finish and we see that the values have yet again struggled here i mean this is i mean keselowski is able to pass through but when you look at like the slower cars like you're seeing that like the slow guys are running back the field and so um what i would probably prioritize is probably place differential upside in a race that um all things being equal in a sense where um Pit road strategy is very much up in the air of like, what are teams going to do? How do you gain positions? Like, clearly you're not going to have somebody pit every single time there's a, there's a yellow. You're pretty much always going to have people in the back short pitting or just trying to get off tire strategy or getting off whatever strategy they're running. That would, where I'm at, would probably prioritize place differential in, in this race. And just for the fact that not only do they have the advantage of starting in the back, you know, so they just have a higher floor, but that is a real life incentive in a, in a track that you can't pass well at. And if you're slow to get off sequence, like this is where, like, I think it's very much one to two lap leaders. And I would probably, I mean, I'm sure the optimal is going to have two. I would probably build with one lap leader and then just the rest place differential and, or, you know, one guy starting in the top five and then like whatever Joe Gibbs got, whatever two idiot like fast cars start from like 10th to 17th. Like if we get two Joe Gibbs cars, if we get Larson, if we get Byron, if we get like Bell, Hamlin, like if those guys start in this range, then it's prioritizing probably whoever starts up front, regardless of what car it is. Cause this is probably a place where we probably will have like an unconventional pole sitter. Um, and then, you know, the good guys who start between like, you know, 10th and 17th, and then place differential for the rest of the race. Like that's that's personally how I'm probably going to build and uh, look at just because. Yet again, this race has such a chance of being decided on pit lane and strategy. Well, then that certainly hurts people up top, and that most certainly helps people starting back in the field. Um, and so when I'm building lineups, that's probably how I'm going to be um, 
building lineups for just going back to kind of where we're at in the short tracks and again, again this is bristol not including phoenix but just something for you guys to look at here like i mean these are the people that we would envision competing in this race in some form or fashion okay and so when i'm saying like oh i want to prioritize place differential or if people are starting the back like if stenhouse is starting the back if Sor like suarez has been uh, horrific but if chastain starts in the back suarez starts in the back eric jones starts in the back uh, Gregson, Barry, like those types of people who you would typically see, you know, anywhere from like 15th to like 29th. If these, or, or if those like individual drivers that fit that profile are starting in the back, then that that's who I'm going to play. Um, and I can't imagine situations where I don't do that. And it probably leans more to that since we're avoiding the 5K range, we're probably going to build a more balanced lineup. And so you're going to end up with probably like people like Priest. As I said, Gregson, Barry, Suarez, you know, Chastain, possibly Bowman. Like, those are the types. Like, I, I, I would look at a very balanced build here and probably avoid the value range um, just on the outside looking in of how I probably uh, construct lineups and stuff like that. When we look at Portland for the Xfinity Series, okay, and we look at... I'll just bring up, I'll just bring up the road courses for... Boop, boop. We'll look at the last. We'll look at the last six. We're not completely just throwing in everybody who's been in here, but this is where we're at in terms of you know pretty much best best guys on road courses. Um, Portland is very much if he's starting for like the guy starting first is pretty is pretty much gonna have the best car. It's gonna be a real chance it's AJ Allmendinger. Okay, real chance you're playing AJ Allmendinger today and then just prioritizing place differential and or. Uh, people that are probably going to score anywhere from like a 4.8 value to a 5.1 value. And I'm saying that in a range since we don't have salaries. Um, like if Herbst, possibly Sam Mayer, Austin Hill, Jesse Love, um, Herbst, guys that you would envision, I don't know who would be 10K with AJ. But I'm envisioning that we're probably going to have a lot of 9K guys either offer place differential or offer a chance to run the top 10 all day. And so their value range, like I said, would prior would be pretty much from like 4.8 to like 5.1 or whatever. Like those are, that's probably the cutoff that I would do. Like if, if, if we run into a situation where uh, an expected projection for somebody is falling a line of like a 4.4 or below, like I think you just have to remove them. Um, but if you're getting like, you know, Chandler Smith, Hemrick, um, Anthony Alfredo starting in like the fringe, like top 13. Well then like, let's see where their projection falls in line. If they fall in line between that four, eight, then I'm perfectly fine with them. If they're lower than that, I, I wouldn't do that. Um, in the back of the field, pretty much wide open. Okay. Like straight up, like it, it's Portland. We're going to have guys slide off the track. We're going to have specifically in turn one, we're, we're probably going to have issues in turn one, uh, up front, mid pack, back of the field. Doesn't matter. We always have issues in turn one. We always have issues on the sweeping right corner of people like trying to pass or trying to make something work before they get down the long straightaway down the back. And where I'm at, uh, yet again, I mean, it's just, it just, you know, a PD race at Portland, which is like, what, what are they doing? Is Portland even on here? How many laps is Portland? We're looking at, oh man, let's go and look at Portland. Portland, 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 Portland. How do I get to, we'll just do this. Portland, we are looking at Portland. Where are you at, Portland? We're looking at uh, that. That is overtime. I don't remember. It's 75 laps. So we're looking at 75 laps, which is practically no fast laps, no laps led. Guys up front, I would argue, would probably be Augar and AJ. Would probably be your main guys. AJ is most likely going to get the pole. He's most likely going to go for the win. So you can realistically project AJ to take like at least 22 fast laps. 35 laps led as like a, uh, you know, like I think that'd be a pretty decent projection. And at that point with him being first, he's still going to end up being scoring like, what would that be, like mid-60s or something? Probably high 60s, 70s, somewhere around there. Um, past that, it's relevant what you, what you project him for, what his projection is, because at that point you're building with him leading and winning. And or, I mean, I'm using AJ there, but you can, you know, move that with like driver X or whatever. Like if it's all guy up front, if it's, Chandler Smith up front. I st I, I still think it's AJ. Like it'd be very very difficult for it to not be AJ, um, in this situation. So like it's it's you're paying up for AJ and then place differential that place differential and or 
you know, the 9K guys maintain their images in the top 10 all day. And then it'll just come to whatever math problem we're running into at the end of the slate of if, you know, the PD guys are outscoring the guys who who, who are up front, depending on what their price is and stuff. Um, very wide open, you know, like, you know, Wednesday entering this race. Like, I, I would just place, I would just chase place differential at Portland and, uh, you know, just root for chaos and let your guys get up there. Um, when we're looking at the truck series for Gateway, similar, similar instance to the Cup Series, we've seen Gateway almost be more of a runaway than other tracks, only due to the fact that the leader, like it's probably, oh man, shocking discovery, probably going to be Corey Heim, Eckes, Ty Majeski, even Ben Rhodes to an extent, but like it's most likely Heim by himself, Eckes, or um, Lane Riggs, because the 38 has been fast at Gateway, but when we're looking at the Truck Series, you know, very similar to the Cup Series. However, the pit road should not be as big of an issue. Now, the reason I'm saying that is because typically when the Truck Series gets spread out at Gateway, let's see if I'm right on this here, but as I'm just thinking out loud, real chance we end up having them go quite long at Gateway. We'll look at these last couple Truck Series races. Maybe I'm just completely an idiot and forgot, uh, but I'm pretty sure I'm not doing that. Uh, let's just check the amount of yellows here. Actually, quite a lot of quite a lot of short runs here. Shorter runs here. I guess I'm just remembering the early runs. Oh, okay. Let's see where these guys are at here. Creed. NASCAR. This one was more spread out, but this was due to pit road. Well, okay, we'll disregard that. That's more so. Where's the. Oh, man, I forgot my Jeski got crashed here. It might be the year before I'm thinking of Todd Gillen when, when he was a front row. Anywho, well, I mean, as we're looking here, like, okay, well, pit road's going to be a big. Who stays out? Who doesn't pit? Like, you know, uh, I mean, that's just how Gateway is, man. It's a short track. With more, actually shorter runs than what we're probably used to here. Where does the stage in? We don't have the stage. We don't have the stages highlighted. Nice. So a lot of these instances most likely cause the end of the stage. Um, let's see what we're running at here. 23. 23. 20. Okay, so, I mean, this is Joe Cobb and guys in the background and issues, but real chance half the field is a lap down. Even with the amount of yellows that we've had here. So bottom of the salary is going to be quite open, so Lawless Allen, Ryum if he has a truck, um, certainly Mason Massey. Uh, actually, the two young, mo actually, the, the young motorsports cars and even spencer boyd in his 76 machine is probably open or there probably like i said chasing eckes Corey heim um real chance you know ankrum just fucks up again and just is massive chalk again uh which you know godspeed for everybody who's been on the tyler ankrum chalk recently um but like if Roger, like I would envision Gateway to probably have like two chalk, like place differential, like pay ups in the back of the field, go to the top to get Corey Heim, get whatever value at the bottom works for you to do that, whether it be Holmes, you know, the the, the, the young cars of of Mason um, and the other fellow, I just went blank, Memphis probably. Um, but yeah, like that. I don't know. Like now that we're out of like the 1.5 mile fun stuff, like we're we're in June, man. <laughs> These tracks are lame to watch. They're boring. June is just one of those weeks to or one of those, you know, months of where like, okay, cool. We did everything that we wanted to through the month of May. Like we found all our data points that we wanted to use. Now we're using completely different stuff and we're at completely different tracks. So nothing that happened the last month and a half at NASCAR even matters now. We're like starting from scratch, starting from from, you know, starting from 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 nothing for these short tracks and stuff 
and we can see going back to you know and some of the others i mean for the xfinity we're like doing the road course stuff now but for like trucks now we can start seeing of where people are at in terms of their short track stuff and so kind of going back to martinsville um and see what changes were made from there and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, anyway, June, you know, I mean, we're out of the 1.5s for a while. So now we just focus on more place differential up like at least just speaking out loud. That's where I'm at of, uh, of anticipating how I would end up playing here. Like now I'm much more place differential heavy, um, than what I had been the last month across all the sports or across all the, the series rather. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that, that's basically, it. I'll be back Tuesday of next week. Um, if you have any questions, I mean, I'm, I'm more than happy to answer stuff in discord. Uh, it'll be sporadic and stuff and sheets will still be uploading his projections and stuff like that. Um, like I said, I'll have my stuff up for trucks Friday night. Couple go up Saturday. I will not be putting anything up for Xfinity series and I will not be live this week. I can't, I don't envision I'm going to have any videos made in the hotel or anything like that. Um, but past that, I hope you guys have a good week, and I will see you guys next week. So bye-bye. See ya.